Well, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Matins in the Morning. It is Tuesday, July 30th. That's Tuesday of the 17th week of Ordinary <laughs> Time. My name is Nathan. I'm joined this morning by Wayne, and we're coming to you from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the liturgy of the hours. If you'd like to find out more about our retreat center and the work that we do, you can uh, do that over at our website at liturgyofthehours.org. Uh, we are in Volume 3 of the Liturgy of the Hours 4 Volume Set. If you've been praying with, following along with the prayer books, uh, we just have a couple page numbers for you today. You can also find these in the description below the video. Our opening hymn, our antiphons and psalms, will come from the current day of the Psalter, beginning with the hymn at the top of page 723. <coughs> and our readings, responsories, and concluding prayer are in the proper of seasons, beginning on page 549. As always, we'll begin with our prayer that we pray in preparation for the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open, O Lord, Lord, my mouth to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, in union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you were on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Lord Jesus, once you spoke to men Upon the mountain in the plain Oh, help us listen now as then And wonder at your words again We all have secret fears to face Our minds and motives to amend we seek your truth, we need your grace, our living Lord and present friend. The gospel speaks and we receive your light, your love, your own command. Oh, help us live what we believe in daily work of heart and hand. <clears throat> the Lord is just, he will defend the poor. Lord, why do you stand afar off and hide yourself in times of distress? The poor man is devoured by the pride of the wicked. He is caught in the schemes that others have made. For the wicked man boasts of his heart's desires, the covetous blasphemes and spurns the Lord. In his pride the wicked says he will not punish. There is no God, such are his thoughts. His path is ever untroubled, your <clears throat> judgment is far from his mind. His enemies he regards with contempt, he thinks never shall I falter. Misfortune shall never be my lot. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, oppression, mischief and deceit under his tongue. He lies in wait among the reeds, the innocent he murders in secret. His eyes are on the watch for the helpless <clears throat> man. He lurks in hiding like a lion in his lair. He lurks in hiding to seize the poor. He seizes the poor man and drags him away. He crouches, preparing to spring, and the helpless fall beneath his strength. He thinks in his heart, God forgets. He hides his face, he does not see. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The, the Lord, Lord is just, he will defend, defend the, the poor. poor. <clears throat> Lord, Lord, you, you know, know the, the burden, burden of, of my, my sorrow. Arise then, Lord, lift up your hand. O God, do not forget the poor. Why should the wicked spurn the Lord, and think in his heart he will not punish? But you have seen the trouble and sorrow. You note it, you take it in hand. The helpless trusts himself to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the sinner. Punish his wickedness till nothing remains. 
The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen shall perish from the land he rules. Lord, you hear the prayer of the poor. <clears throat> you strengthen their hearts. You turn your ear to protect the rights of the orphaned and oppressed, so that mortal man may strike terror no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, Lord you, you know the, the burden, burden of my sorrow. <clears throat> The words of the Lord are true, like, like silver from the furnace. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished. Truth has gone from the sons of men. Falsehood they speak one to another, with lying lips, with a false heart. May the Lord destroy all lying lips, the tongue that speaks high-sounding words. Those who say, Our tongue is our strength, our lips are our own, who is our master. For the poor who are oppressed and the needy who groan, I myself will arise, says the Lord. I will, grant th I will grant them the salvation for which they thirst. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. It is you, O Lord, who will take us in your care and protect us forever from this generation. See how the wicked prowl on every side while the worthless are prized highly by the sons of men. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. <laughs> Amen. The words, words of, of the Lord, Lord are true, like, like silver, silver from, from the, the furnace. furnace. The Lord teaches the humble his way. He guides the gentle-hearted along the right path. <clears throat> from the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. There is really no need for me to write to you about this collection for the members of the church. I already know your willingness and boast about you to the Macedonians with respect to it, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year. Your zeal has stirred up most of them. I nonetheless send the brothers so that our claims for you in this regard may not be shown empty. I do so that you may be ready, as I have been saying you are, lest any Macedonians come with me and find you unready, then I should be put to shame to say nothing of you for having had this trust. I have thought it necessary to exhort the brothers to go to you and arrange in advance for the bountiful gift you have already promised. It should be ready as a gracious gift, not as an extraction. Let me say this much. He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Every one must give according to what he has inwardly decided, not sadly, not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. God can multiply his favors among you so that you may always have enough of everything and even a surplus for good works, as it is written. He scattered abroad and gave to the poor. His justice endures forever. He who supplies seed for the sower and bread for the eater will provide in abundance. He will multiply the seed you sow and increase your generous yield. In every way your liberality is enriched. Through us it results in thanks offered to God. The administering of this public benefit not only supplies the needs of the members of the church, but also overflows in much gratitude to God. Because of your praiseworthy service, they are glorifying God for your, your obedient faith in the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with all. They pray for you longingly because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Give to others, and you will receive. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For whatever measure you give to others will be the measure you receive. 
Each person should give according to what he has inwardly decided, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For whatever measure you give to others will be the measure you receive. From a Sermon on Charity by St. Basil the Great, Bishop. Man should be like the earth and bear fruit. He should not let inanimate matter appear to surpass him. The earth bears crops for your benefit, not for its own. But when you give to the poor, you are bearing fruit which you will gather in for yourself, since the reward for good deeds goes to those who perform them. Give to a hungry man, and what you give becomes yours, and indeed it returns to you with interest. As the sower profits from wheat that falls into the ground, so will you profit greatly in the world to come from the bread that you place before a hungry man. Your husbandry must be the sowing of heavenly seed. Sow integrity for yourselves, says Scripture. You are going to leave your money behind you here. <clears throat> you are going to leave your money behind you here, whether you wish to or not. On the other hand, you will take with you to the Lord the honor that you have won through good works. In the presence of the universal judge, all the people will surround you, acclaim you as a public benefactor, and tell of your generosity and kindness. Do you not see how people throw away their wealth on theatrical performances, boxing contests, mimes, and fights between men and wild beasts, which are sickening to see, and all for the sake of fleeting honor and popular applause? If you are, mis if you are miserly with your money, how can you expect any similar honor? Your reward for the right use of the things of this world will be everlasting glory, a crown of righteousness, and the kingdom of heaven. God will welcome you. The angels will praise you. All men who have existed since the world began will call you blessed. Do you care nothing for these things and spurn hopes that lie in the future for the sake of your present enjoyment? Come, distribute your wealth freely. Give generously to those who are in need. Earn for yourself the psalmist's praise. He gave freely to the poor. His righteousness will endure forever. How grateful you should be to your own benefactor. How you should beam with joy at the honor of having other people come to your door instead of being obliged to go to theirs. But you are now ill-humored and unapproachable. You avoid meeting people in case you might be forced to loosen your purse strings even a little. You can say only one thing, I have nothing to give you, I am only a poor man. A poor man you certainly are, and destitute of all real riches. You are poor in love, generosity, faith in God, and hope of eternal happiness. <clears throat> Share your bread with the hungry, and take the poor and homeless into your own house. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your holiness will go before you. When you see a man who is naked, clothe him, and do not scorn your brother. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your holiness will go before you. Let us pray. God, God, our, our Father, Father and protector, protector, without you nothing, nothing is holy, nothing has value. Guide us to everlasting life by helping us to use wisely the blessings you have given to the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. And we'll now conclude with our prayer that we pray following the divine office. To the most, most holy and undivided Trinity, to the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, to the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary ever virgin, and to the whole company of the saints, be everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Amen. Blessed, Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breasts which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Oh, 